Matt, the Kentucky Derby is in the books. It's time to start talking about the middle jewel. Of course, I'm talking about Pimlico Race Course in Baltimore for the Preakness, which now is only about 11 days away. Uh, right now, uh, it looks like Justify 2 to 5, Matt? 2 to 5 ish? I think that would probably be a generous price at this point, Brian. Um, we're looking at probably just two Derby horses uh, making the making the run from Churchill Downs to Pimlico in Justify and Bra Bravazo from the barn of D. Wayne Lucas. Right. Uh, good magic, maybe. Lone Sailor, maybe. But uh, the six probables we have right now. And there will be more horses. Let, let's emphasize this. Neither matter. I expect this to be a six or seven horse field. There will be a few more that pop up out of the woodwork, especially when they see such a small field point for the Preakness. But right now, the six probables are only justified. Quip, Bravazo, Tenfold, Sporting Chance, and Diamond King. Good Magic Lone Sailor still on the possibility list. But as of now, Matt, in fact, if we look at those probables, again, Justify, Quip, Bravazo, Tenfold, Sporting Chance, Diamond King, the first thing I see there is, yeah, Justify is a huge favorite, but all of those horses kind of like to be close to the pace early. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did, Brian. And and before we, you know, dive into all the horses, let's just uh, remind the folks that... Uh, Justifies trainer Bob Baffert has done pretty darn well in the Preakness. He's cut six Preakness wins already, and and interestingly, um, he has won the Preakness four times. Four of those times were with four Kentucky Derby winners. So he's pretty hard to beat with his. He hasn't been beat yet with his Kentucky Derby horses coming right back in the Preakness. That's a great point, Matt. Uh, yeah, Baffert won his fifth Kentucky Derby, uh, as we know, with Justify. And the previous four, Silver Charm, Real Quiet, War Emblem, and American Pharaoh, all came back to win the Preakness. So Justify would uh, be looking to continue a pretty incredible streak there for Baffert Derby winners coming back to win the Preakness. Uh, again, getting back to the field a little bit. Now, Quip. And Tenfold Matter are interesting horses to me in that they're both pretty lightly raced, Quip, especially this year. Tenfold's only had three races. And in the Arkansas Derby, they were both uh, uh, stalking and, and right there and part of that uh, scrum for second, uh, along with Solomini and Combatant, two horses who didn't fare particularly well in the Kentucky Derby, nor did the winner, Magnum Moon, probably a throwout race for Magnum Moon to some extent. Uh, but Quip and uh, Tenfold, both horses that look like they could move forward and maybe two of the more interesting horses in the Preakness field. Yeah, and if we remember, let's go back to Quip and remember that uh, he qualified for the Kentucky Derby field, but uh, his connections, his trainer, R Rudolph Brissett and uh, Windstar uh, decided that he needed a little bit more time. And since they had a bunch of other horses uh, in the Derby, including Justify, they decide to wait a little bit, and uh, he's doing very well out of that. So this is a horse who ran a night, really nice race, finishing second uh, in the uh, in the Arkansas Derby. Um, you'd mentioned Tenfold also, who went into the Arkansas Derby with uh, he was two for two with a maiden special weight and a first level allowance win at Oaklawn Park. Um, had a good trip, kind of leveled out a little bit to finish fifth. But since the Arkansas Derby, uh, trainer Steve Asmussen says that this horse is, is doing splendidly and has moved forward really nicely out of that Arkansas Derby. It's a horse Asmussen likes a lot that has some talent. Yeah, Matt, you know, without good magic or possibly lone sailor going into the Preakness, right now Tenfold might be my second pick. Tenfold was wide in the Arkansas Derby or at least wide of all the horses contending there. And he stayed on really well. And again, only his third lifetime race. He was beaten less than a length. Uh, he was fighting with Quip for most of the stretch. So I thought it was a, a pretty solid performance, but he looks like a horse who could move forward off that Arkansas Derby experience. I guess Quip might be the second choice, assuming good magic's not in here. Maybe Bravazo gets some money. Maybe uh, Tenfold gets some money. 
Sporting Chance was a well-beaten fourth in the Pate Mile over that sloppy track. Uh, he gets another chance, some talent there. Diamond King uh, is, is a Maryland horse who's coming off a win in the Federico Tessio, but it wasn't all that impressive, uh, at least from my eyes. So, uh, again, a lot of horses who like to be near the lead. Uh, show me a decent rallier that does indeed enter the Preakness, and he might be the horse to beat for second. But when I'm making my contenders and pretenders list, an article coming up soon on Horse Racing Nation, Matt, I might end up with simply one contender and every other horse being a pretender. Uh, this is the race that doesn't scare me for Justify. I think it'll be the Belmont, which will be the tougher test for him eventually. I, I agree with you, Brian. Uh, Justify off that Derby performance and, and his record and his talent. Uh, um, he's going to be very, very hard to beat in the Preakness. Right. And if Chad Brown does indeed decide, decide to send good magic into the Preakness, that's probably a great sign. Uh, for good magic, meaning that he just came out of the Derby super duper and Brown's willing to run his big horse in the big race uh, at Baltimore on the 19th. So Preakness preview right now is Justify and the rest, Matt.